Hey everybody, it's Norm from Tested. And Kishore from Tested. Kishore, as our senior science correspondent, you get to see some pretty awesome demonstrations. Absolutely, one of my favorites is always by Zeke Kosover. He's a teacher at the Exploratorium, which is an amazing museum of science, art, and human perception. And he's gonna be with us today to show us one of my favorite science demos ever. I'm so excited. Hope you guys enjoy. Zeke Kosover teacher at the Exploratorium, which is a museum of science, art, and human perception, joins us. We have a box with what looks like a speaker in it. What are we gonna do today? So you remember those uh, demonstrations where they take a wine glass and they play music or a sound and they eventually shatter the wine glass? Oh yeah, you have to do this like super high-pitched sound. Yeah, exactly. It's, I mean, breaking glass with sound is incredibly cool, however, that high-pitched sound is really close to the most sensitive part of your hearing. So it sounds super loud. So you have to do it inside of a plastic box, which is inside of another plastic box. Otherwise, it's just... Isn't it really hard to do as well? It's a, it's a bear to do because the wine glasses don't have an easy breaking point. Um, you need a lot of volume and you have to have a lot of volume where it's really painful to listen to. So we're going to break wine glasses with a speaker box? We're not going to break wine glasses. Okay. Instead, we're going to break a pane of glass instead. How are we gonna break a pane of glass? Well, because that's like, it, it's a totally different shape, so its resonance must be completely right. different. So instead of a wine glass, which uh, goes like this as it's trying to break, um, a pane of glass goes like this. It bounces up and down, uh, like a xylophone bar. And if we can find that this uh, pane of glass's resonance, and then use the speakers to project the sound at that same frequency, we can make it flex so much that it'll eventually it'll shatter. We're gonna have to send the sound in a really specific direction. Correct, so uh, wine glass is small, so it's easy to aim at. Uh, the pane of glass is large. Um, and so what we wanna do is have it vibrate at, it's in the sound at its ends, so like this at the ends, and then in the middle, which is my hand. Uh, in this. So we're creating a waveform through the glass. Correct. Correct. We're going to pump it up and down, what's called a standing wave. Um, and so the way we're going to do this is with this uh, speaker box design that came, was, uh, came up with by one of my friends, David Cardalis. Um, and what it does is we have two speakers here, um, and they're aimed away from each other. So they're like this. And these are like car speakers? These are car speakers, totally normal, cheapo car speakers. Um, and what happens is, is that we're gonna wire them so that they both uh, fire in phase. They both go like this, and then they go like this, and they go like that, and then they go like this. And that's gonna pump air into this set uh, here. So the pressure in here is gonna get higher, and at the same time, the pressure in there is gonna get lower. And then the reverse is gonna happen. This one, the pressure is gonna get higher, and the pressure in there is gonna get lower. And so we'll be pumping air in and out of the box, and a very, and it'll be like a, a, a frequency of sound from it. And is there anything special about the box or the materials that you're using to make well, it? So the box is made of, of heavy wood. We don't want the, uh, the box itself to be using up the energy by having it vibrate. And I've sealed it up. I've put, um, it, might, it might be hard to see because I kind of use clear sealant though to uh, cover up all the holes because we don't want to waste any sound having it come out the holes. You want to direct the... everything you can into the Correct. actual paint. Correct. So even though this is going to be very high decibel level, right. there's not a lot of risk of damage to human ears with the frequency that you're exactly, going to play. Exactly, exactly. And then when it comes to actually just sealing up the box and you've put three holes in this, is there a, re is there a reason you put this diameter hole in the top? Um, so the, we, it needs to be smaller than the piece of glass that we're breaking. Uh, we need a little platform for the glass to sit on. And this is doing no more than just holding up that right. pane of glass. Right, you know, like they're like little pegs mm -hmm. in a xylophone that it sits on. Um, but we might wanna move them around. Like it's not clear that that's exactly the spot we want it because different pieces of glass are gonna be at different spots. Um, and so what I have here is some magnetic tape. So this is the spot that I'm thinking it's going to be at. So mm -hmm. just somewhere right, right around there is good. And then we'll put on the glass. And do you have to do anything to prep this glass? So it turns out that uh, brand new glass is really hard to break. But older glass is 
easy to break. And the reason why old glass is easy to break isn't because they used to make crappy glass and now we make better glass. Um, it's because then the glass just being up on the walls of your house or whatever, um, it gets lots of little cracks in it. And those little cracks make the glass, uh, those cracks will be a starting point, a nucleation site, if you will, for the beginning of a big crack that will eventually crack it. This is brand new glass, and so it doesn't have any of those. Well, I'll first show you how it looks with the, just the glass by itself. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll put on some safety glasses just in case. We need to play the, a frequency to the glass, um, and it turns out that it's hard to find a song that's like exactly the right frequency you want, but you can buy that's, I think that's a challenge to the audience, to make yes, a exactly. 35 hertz, hertz song. song that's, you know, worth listening to. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is I, I got a tone generator program, um, and we can then just sort of step through some uh, low frequency sounds to find something close. So you're going to start about where? I'm going to start a little bit above. Mm -hmm. So I can hear it, but it's just like a low hum at this point, almost like the sound of a vibrator chair. Yeah. So that's because like this is actually quite loud. If we had a, mm -hmm. a decibel meter, it would show it being about 100 decibels or 110 Holy decibels. Cow. Luckily, we just can't. We can't hear it. Will we see like some? Uh, is we there are, a way we can visualize how? We'll, we'll know when, when we get close. Like you could probably I'm gonna put. Something. put a marshmallow on top to see if we can see it. As we get closer. Mm -hmm. So now I'm lowering the frequency. This is really a hundred decibels? Yeah, yeah. It's this is super... crazy. I barely, I like, it, it doesn't feel like anything. Here, we can show you a little bit by. Oh, wow. That's really vibrating pretty yeah. dramatically. So, so you we're can still feel the glass is vibrating. Yeah, but we're still quite far away from its resonance spot. So I'm gonna start going down. <laughs> it's like a bad motor. When your mo like lawnmower <laughs> is about to die, that's what I feel like is happening. And what will we see when we start to get? Oh, yeah. there, that's what we see. And start to see it flexing, and the marshmallows are starting to move around. Well, that's not the best. Marshmallow will come back out somehow. All right, well, the marshmallows have done their work. I'm gonna take them off, because it feels like it's starting to really flex a lot. Yeah, so now we're getting close to the spot where it'll flex. It is like, whoa! It's like moving up and down almost like a millimeter. Whoa, I'm back. <laughs> that thing is, is bending like I haven't seen glass bend before. How violent of a break is it going to be? It's not too bad. It doesn't... Okay, then I'm going to stop being afraid of the science. I'm going to put a marshmallow on top really quickly. Wow, that is a lot of energy coming out. I'm surprised with this much flex, it's not wanting to break. Yeah, so that new glass is really strong. Oh, damn you, new glass! So new glass is a little bit of a problem, but we can give it a give it a place for it to start its motion. So we can give it a little score. And this is just a simple glass cutter. There. Right, yeah. So we'll just give it a couple of little scores on it to get started. And it can be anywhere. It doesn't have to be... Well, it won't work if it's in the nodes. So that's not where the glass is moving. Um, and it's a little bit more convenient to have it break in the middle. So now we can start it up again. Now we're away from the resonance, the exact spot, so I'll try to get closer to it and see what happens. Whoa! That shattered basically right where two of the score marks were. Yeah, so the... And the flex was almost an inch at yeah, that point. Yeah, huge flex, and then 
what happens is that at the score mark, it's, it's pulled a little bit apart at the top there, and then that makes the score deeper, and then it gets pulled a little bit apart, and that gets, gets a little bit deeper, and a little bit deeper, and a little bit deeper. But um, you'll notice that it wasn't, I didn't change the volume, just the frequency at that point. And so the, by changing the frequency until we got the right spot, then that made the motion the greatest, and that was, caused the resonance for it to crack. So you can show mm -hmm. resonance across a number of things. So mm -hmm. we've seen that visualized with fires before with right. a Rubens tube, but this yeah. is probably the easiest on the ears way to yes. break glass it, with sound. It's definitely the easiest on the ears. For more information about projects like this, where can people go? So uh, you can kind of go to www.exploratorium.edu um, or you can come visit us at Pier 15 uh, on the Embarcadero in San Francisco. There's a number of great activities and, uh, and numerous uh, websites on the Exploratorium site to keep you occupied with science experiments all day long. Thank you so much, Zeke. Thank you. You broke some glass with sound. Yeah, and it wasn't that frustrating of an experience. I, I've really tried that trying to break a wine glass, uh, both by singing into it and then using some different devices to break it. It is a frustrating process. So it was great to see how using just a simple pane of glass and a much lower frequency that you could really generate that same effect. That principle of resonance. I mean, it's common you've seen bridges fall down because of that finding out resonant frequency. Turns out for glass, you can't hear it but you can definitely visualize it. You can also feel it. We could feel it in our gut a little bit. And I have to say, it was still a little bit surprising. You could see it on the high speed. I almost like jumped away a couple times as it shattered, as it, as it broke. But that principle of resonance is incredibly powerful. We see it across a lot of different mechanisms, like you said, with bridges. Rubens tube is one of my favorite um, experiments that you see that in a lot. So that standing wave is a powerful pattern in all of nature. If you have other science experiments that you wanna see us try on Simple Feats of Science, leave us a comment below and we'll take a look at it. Until then, please subscribe to our YouTube channel, like this video, Kishore and I will see you next time.